There's a big flow that's coming. See, God put this thing in pastor's heart. That's the word God gave her for this church for this year. And if God told her that, then that's exactly what God is going to do. You know, the Bible says, believe in the Lord thy God, so you should be established. Second Chronicles 20, 20 says, believe his prophets, and so you shall prosper. By believing that word God gave her for the church this year, you know it will work for you. Just mix in faith with it. And one of the ways you know you're in faith, if you're really in faith, you'll prepare.
Previously on Fresh Dew. Now, tithing is not just about writing a check or doing a, doing a transfer. It's an act of worship. I usually like to take the tenth, the first tenth, take it out first before I touch the rest. And then I'll tell God, God, thank you for the privilege of being able to have some income come my way. You gave me the strength. It's your blessing that's doing that. Just as an act of gratitude and worship to you, I thank you for this. And then I tell him, you said in your word that if I'll do this, I shall prove you concerning the tithe and see that you'll do this and this and this. Then I claim those things that God's word says and they work for me. Well, my seventh and final point is this. We need to exercise practical wisdom in handling our finances and be led by the Holy Ghost. We need to exercise practical wisdom in handling our finances and also be led by the Holy Ghost. What do I mean practical wisdom? You know, there's some things that work practically. They just work. John Wesley said this. He said, make all the money you can. Save all the money you can and give all the money you can. That's just good wisdom. Brother Higgins said he noticed this as an itinerant minister. He said he believed God maximally all the time. But he noticed the pattern 
that some month will come, it will have over and above his budget. The next month, it will have just his budget. And then the month after, he will have a little lower than his budget. He said he saw that as a recurring decimal. He said he believed God maximally all the time. But he noticed that pattern. He said, so this is what he did. The month where he had above his budget, he saved that money. So the month where it was less than his budget, there was enough to cushion that. You see that? There's a place of practical wisdom. Practical wisdom. Amen. You don't want to eat with your 10 fingers, right? Yeah, you say, but this money is not enough. Well, if you make it a little less not enough, it wasn't enough, right? But start saving. Do something about investments. But be careful in that area. Anytime anything looks too good to be true, it's not true. Except it's the gospel. Any deal that looks too good to be true, usually is not true. Except it's the gospel. Amen. That's the only thing that's always true. So there's a place of just practical wisdom. Talking about that, you know, John 13, 34 and 35, Jesus said, a new commandment I give unto you that ye love one another. As I've loved you, that ye also love one another. By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples, if ye have love one to another. See, something about walking in love and networking. A lot of the supply we need is in the hands of others. A lot of supply others need is in your own hands. If we don't build relationships and build bridges, we're going to miss out. We're going to miss out. We're going to miss out. You see, the body of Christ is like this. God made us all deficient by design. If one person had it all, you wouldn't need the rest of us. The truth is this. Where my knowledge of God's word ends is where someone else's knowledge of God's word starts. Brother Higgins said he was in this meeting. There was this guy who was preaching. He said he was like the guy saw that that Higgins fellow was in the meeting, so he was going to skin his hide. And he just gave it to him. He was lambasting the faith message. Just hitting, giving it to him on all fours. He said, he just maintained the attitude. He doesn't quite mean it that way. I'm just going to stay teachable and be willing to learn. He said, 10 minutes after, the man gave the Bible answer to a question he had had for 25 years. Yeah. He said, Brother Hagen had a Bible question. Oh, of course, it wasn't God. <laughs> Amen. So you see, also supply. There are even sinners. You know, Luke 6, 38 says, shall men give into your bosom? It doesn't say, shall Christians give into your bosom? Sometimes people ask me, how about doing business? This guy is a sinner guy. Should I do business with him? What I usually encourage is, I like when it comes to partnerships, it's best you know, starting a company. If it's a Christian, then it's an equal yoke, right? Particularly someone who believes like you do. But you see, don't let's, don't let's uh, limit ourselves by not... Relating. There are a whole lot of unbelievers who are looking for somebody to give work to. And they have a lot of money to throw around. And you're just looking for somebody who's honest, who will deliver quality service. And that's why we can't be nasty, right? That's why we just good manners. Like Pastor keeps talking about, amen, just good etiquette, just being courteous, just building relationships, just stuff like that. There was one man, you know, <laughs> I'll never forget this. You know, because of how I treated him and greeted him, he called me. He said, I like you. He said, I'm going to, I want to help you. I want to bless you. If I tell you the way he wanted to help me, you will laugh. But you see, that was what he knew. That was how he knew. People are looking for people to invest in. People are looking for people they can trust. And you know something, it may not even be, you may, the people who have some of these things may not be the people you think have it. Some people are unassuming. Some people, you won't know who they are. You won't know what they have. You won't, you won't have a clue. You won't have a clue. I heard of one man, real life story. He wanted to give a million dollars to this organization. He got there and um, he sat. He said, when a Christian organization, the way they treated him, Said so he told himself, I must not have heard God. I'm not giving them money. He was looking, just wearing jeans and a t-shirt, but he had box, but you couldn't tell. The way they treated him, he went with his money. He said, I'll give it to someone else. Amen. So, building relationships, that's just good practical wisdom. Then there's something about not being covetous. In Philippians 4, from verse 11 to 13, Paul said something that he has learned in whatsoever state he's in, therewith to be content. 
said he has learned both how to abound and abase, how to have and how to suffer need. Now, was Paul preaching poverty there? No, he wasn't. But he was just saying, look, there are situations he faces where a whole lot comes in. And then sometimes things may be a bit lean. He said, but whatever circumstance he's in, he's learned to be independent of circumstances, right? And then he said, he said, I can do all things through Christ who strengtheneth me. You see, God doesn't want us to be covetous. God doesn't want us to be covetous. Something about wealth. Sometimes you think if I have more money, I'll be more happy. Not necessarily. You may be more miserable. There are billionaires that commit suicide. So money is not the thing. It's God that's the thing. And we should put God first. And guess what? God wants us to have the money. But you see, while you're on the way to where you are believing God to go, be content where you are. Be content where you are. Celebrate where you are. Be happy for where you are. Somebody else is getting blessed. And you think, why should that guy be getting blessed? After all, I know more word than he does. After all, I'm more diligent than he does. After all this, after all he that, he's that. He's not the one that you'll have given. Well, maybe he was just favored. And you know something, if you celebrate favor, favor will celebrate you. Yeah. There's more where that came from. So just being content where we are, not complacent, not, we sh you should have a drive, right? To want to do more for God, to want to have more so you can do more for Him, to want to be more, be all that God wants us to be. But let's be content. Let's not be covetous. Let's not get greedy. Let's keep our hearts right. Let's keep our hearts set on God. Let's maintain our character. Psalm 15 verse 4 says, In whose eyes a vile person is contemned, he that sweareth to his own hurt and changeth not. Everybody is looking for a person of integrity. What's integrity? When you are the same, your words and your actions are the same. Your private life and your public life, they are the same. You see, character. Character. You know, there's some monies you can have. And if you are not prepared and have the stamina to handle them, you could go insane. Yeah. Supposing you had a billion dollars right now in your bank account. Some people will, they'll just run mad. Yeah. So God wants us to build the capacity so that we can handle stuff. You know, there's something about money. You know, that's why the Bible says a man cannot serve God and mammon. There's a pride that money can put in you if you are not ready for it. You just talk to anybody anyhow. You just act anyhow. You know? So that's why we need to build our character, develop our character. There's big stuff that's coming. There's a big flow that's coming. See, God put this theme in pastor's heart. That's the word God gave her for this church for this year. And if God told her that, then that's exactly what God is going to do. You know, the Bible says, believe in the Lord thy God, so you should be established. Second Chronicles 20, 20. It says, believe his prophets, and so you shall prosper. By believing that word God gave her for the church this year, you know it will work for you. Just mix in faith with it. And one of the ways you know you're in faith, if you're really in faith, you'll prepare. You'll prepare. Ask yourself, if that inflow came in right now, am I ready to handle it? Have I put the structures in place? You see, if we're believing God, inflow is coming, inflow is coming, and we're not preparing for the inflow, we're not really believing God. So let's prepare. Let's get ready. Let's put the systems in place, the structures in place that can handle it. When you do stuff with integrity, people trust you with money. You know, there's some places you won't put big money in because you say, can they handle it? Do they have the capacity? Do they know what to do about that? Can they really handle that? Have they handled such things? So let's keep growing in our capacity. Have integrity. Not be covetous. Have a humble heart. Learn how to save. Learn how to give more. Learn how to invest. And around this area about practical wisdom, being led by the Holy Ghost. Romans 8, 14, the Bible says, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Verse 16 says the Spirit itself, or the margin says himself, bear witness with our spirit that we're the children of God. Isaiah 48, 17, it's the Lord who leads us in the way that we should go. He teaches us to profit. Brother Hagin said, February 1959, while he was in El Paso, Texas. Now, that meeting, I've heard that story from his mouth, Novel Hayes' mouth, a number of people's mouths. And um, he was preaching in this church. He had this habit. He would go to the edge of the pulpit and just stand there. You know, he was doing that. He tripped. He fell. 
And to steady himself, he put out his right hand. He got broken. Broken bad. It was real bad. There was a nurse in the church who had to help. The bone was sticking out. Well, they took him to the hospital. He was had, admitted there for a while. And um, second day, Jesus walked in into the hospital room, picked the chair by his side, said, well, I told you two days ago that I was going to talk to you further about this. Yes. So you know why this happened? You got out of my perfect wheel. You were in my permissive wheel. Now, I didn't do it. I didn't cause the accident. It wasn't my wheel. I didn't want it to happen. But if you had continued the way you were going, you will have died at age 55. You had neglected your prophet's ministry. You had put your teaching gift first. That's why you got into that trouble. And I, I, I had to allow it. At least I got your attention now. Wasn't my best way of doing it, but it's what happened. Well, he told him, he said, if you will follow the inward witness, I will make you rich. He said, I want you to teach my people how to be led by my spirit. If you follow the inward witness, I will make you rich. He told him this, I'm not opposed to my children being rich. I'm opposed to them being covetous. Then the Lord explained to him how the inward witness works. Sometimes you're thinking about doing something, you're praying about it, particularly when you pray in tongues. And the more you pray about it and think about doing it, you just have a hesitancy, a check, an uneasiness on the inside of you. Well, that's the Spirit of God saying, don't do it. And some other times you're thinking about doing something, praying about it, and the more you think about doing it and pray about doing it, you have a good feeling on the inside. Well, that's the Spirit of God saying, go ahead. Brother Hagin wasn't one to make noise about money, but the man was a millionaire. I can tell you that for a fact. He invested some monies. Yeah, he did. There was a $5,000 he invested that became a million. There was another $5,000 he invested that became another million. I'm telling you facts that I know. Last message he preached, camp meeting 2003, uh, in July, last Saturday night, he preached on redeemed from poverty, sickness, and spiritual death. Before he preached that message, he began to talk about, well, the Lord has shown me I must shortly leave off this, my tabernacle. I want to be remembrance of these things after my disease. Then he said, that's not my text. I just thought I ought to read it to you. Well, that was Brother Hagin. Two years before he died, he began to tell his daughter-in-law that he's ready to go. Yeah. Began to tell her they didn't quite want to hear it. I asked Pastor Higgin, how exactly did Brother Higgin die? And he narrated some things to me about what transpired, you know, and how he died and all that. He wasn't sick, didn't have a heart attack, wasn't any of that. But in that message, when he was talking about redeeming from poverty, sickness, and spiritual death, he shared some of these things. He said, by listening to that witness, just following that witness, God made him rich. He'll do the same for you. There was one guy, Barry Horn. In 1970, now Barry Horn ended up being a, a, on the board of Rhema. Barry Horn was involved with the business and um, things had a partner. Things weren't quite working right. So he decided to come out. He got his share of the money. It was $5,500 in 1970. He began to spend and live on that money until he became, it became $50. Then he got a hold of one message, how to train the human spirit. And began to train his spirit, meditate in the word, practice the word, give the word of God first place, instantly obey the voice of your spirit. And you know what? By 1979, Barry Horn was worth $30 million. He said, what, what caused it to happen? He said, just listen to the inward witness. Just listen to the inward witness. There was another guy. That guy was said of him that he never lost money in investments. He was, worth a, he was a millionaire in depression. Now that's a billionaire today. How did you make that money? He said he has, he has a closet. When opportunities come, he will take time out to pray. He said there are times his head will tell him, this is good, this is good, go for it. His heart will say, don't dare. Sometimes his head will say, this is good. His heart will say, yes, it is, go for it. Sometimes his heart will say, don't do it. His head will say, go for it. He learned to listen on the inside. If we will follow that inward witness, if we, see, God knows the business that we walk. He knows the one that won't walk. God knows the job that what you're going to get out of it is a heartache and a heartbreak and depression. He knows. And he knows the one that will succeed. If we will learn to pray more in the spirit, just praying in other tongues, just praying in other tongues. I found something out about money. Hmm? If I want money, a lot of money, I just take good time to pray in tongues. I learned that by experience. I discovered, I stumbled on it. I discovered that if I take protracted time to pray in the Spirit, I had Brother Higgins say this. He said, all the greatest miracles that ever happened in his life were after a time of protracted praying in the Spirit. So whether it's healing miracles, financial miracles, any kind of miracles. 
it took time to pray in other tongues. See, 1 Corinthians 14, 2, the Bible says, For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue, speaketh not unto men, but unto God. For no man understandeth him. How be it in the spirit he speaketh mysteries. When it comes to money, hmm, there's the spirit of God. And there are things, it can cause you to be in the right place at the right time with the right people. He can bring the right inflow into your life. He can bring the right connections your way. He can take the wrong connections out. If we pray much in other tongues, and I'm not talking about one hour, I'm not talking about two hours, I'm talking about protracted praying. Now, of course, you need to start where you're at, right? But just keep at it. Just keep at it. The more spiritual we get, spiritual, in the real sense of spiritual, living right, walking in love, putting the things of God first, and just seeking Him, there is wealth, outstanding wealth, He wants to bring into our hands. Ha <laughs> ha. Prophet Patasa, Mananta Goloto, Evanatas, Ekerodus, Epeneniv, and Manatasa Kala. Yeah, some things happened in the past, and you had your fingers burnt, and then you shied away, and you said, I'm not going to flow in that anymore. I'm not going to try to move in that again. But listen, said the Lord, forget about the mistakes of yesterdays and yesteryears, and walk on with me, for this is a new day and it's a new dawn, and there are fresh opportunities that lie ahead. And so yield to my spirit, said the Lord, and flow with that witness that's within your heart, and you'll see that which I will do that will astound you. And indeed, resources will come into your hands. Huge resources for the sake of the gospel. And as you obey me, you will notice that even your family, your family life will be enhanced. Those round about you will be blessed and you have much cause to be glad. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Now I'm human and I could miss it. But there's somebody on that section right there who has a growth in their body. You have a growth somewhere in your body on that section right there in the middle. If it's you, just put up a hand where you are. Curse that thing, it'll disappear. Amen. Praise God. And begin to shrivel. If that's you, just lift up your hand where you are. Praise God. All right. In the name of Jesus, I speak to that growth. I command you to dry up, wither, disappear, and be no more. In Jesus' name. Someone that has a sore on their leg that just has refused to heal. It's on your right leg. It's a sore. It's just refused to heal. Who are you? Praise God. Glory to God. A sore on your right leg. It's just as refused to heal. All right. Praise God. All right. I see that hand. In the name of Jesus, God's healing power goes into that leg now. Be healed in Jesus' name. Popperadala <laughs> Sukoto. Mememenates, 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 mememenates. Feto kusta credeva na mangas te koro vedita. Yeah, if you want me to do that, <laughs> get it by me one more time. Pefa tu so koro deva tisa ha ha. Levan onsto, levan onsto, levan onsto, levan onsto. Thank you for watching Fresh Dew today with Pastor Nkichi Ene. We trust you were blessed by today's episode. For further information on Fresh Dew, please call us on 0700 Fresh Dew, which is 0700 3737 4339. If you're calling from outside Nigeria, the number will be plus 234 700 3737 4339. Our phones are open from 9 a.m. to 11 p.m. GMT plus one. You can also send us an email to info at freshdew.tv and we'll be glad to serve you. We also invite you to like, follow and interact with us on our Twitter and Facebook pages at Freshdew TV and also on Pastor Nkechi's Facebook pages at Pastor Ketch. For more information on how you can partner with Freshdew and receive Pastor Nkechi's monthly letters and weekly MP3 gifts, please visit our website, www.freshdew.tv. Once again, thanks for being with us today, and we look forward to seeing you next time on Fresh Dew to receive fresh inspiration and direction for your life.